Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are on part two of the face mask video. Last time we designed and constructed the face mask and where we had left off is we had just painted it with primer. And so here we are with just solid primer. Today we're going to finish the paint job and we're gonna put the leather straps on. So I want my mask to look uh, like it's made out of like it's industrial made out of steel uh, and well used so some of it will be painted with color and we'll, we'll make it look like the paint is like chipping off or wearing out some of it will just be raw metal um, so the first thing is I think I'm going to just cover the whole thing with silver so we can start making it look like metal Before I start painting, let's talk about painting metal. So first of all, I want you to imagine what does metal look like? Well, probably you're thinking of something like this. This blade is steel and uh, it's fairly shiny. Here's another example, my steel ruler. It's kind of like a mirror finish, very shiny. This kind of finish is very difficult to fake. Um, it takes expensive specialized paints in order to do that uh, but the truth is metal steel often doesn't look like this um, when you get metallic paints like craft paint that is metallic silver um, and you paint it it's always a little bit dull it, it actually kind of looks like this this is aluminum and if you think, oh, that looks just like what you showed. No, it doesn't. Look, look at the differences. So when you use metallic paint, it often will just look like aluminum and that's fine. But if you want it to look like good used steel, let's look at some and see what some characteristics are. So here's a piece of steel with some age on it. Um, first thing I want to show, let's see, I want to point out is that it's not shiny. Look, let's compare it to the shiny steel. Here's another, this is just regular welding steel. It's much darker, not nearly as shiny. Um, I don't know if you can see the color. I mean, it's very dark and it has kind of a splotchy texture to it. Look at, there's areas here. There's a, an older or a rustier version of steel. So this, here's kind of the less rusty side. It's barely shiny except for in the scratches. It's really kind of chalky, dusty. That's what it looks like. But then here, if we look at the rust, spots of rust everywhere. And the rust itself, if we look at that, it's got different colors. The rust has this, I'm gonna use this one to point. The rust has this kind of light orange color here. And then here there's very dark reddish brown and it looks like it's surrounded by kind of a lighter, uh, more desaturated version of that brown. So it kind of looks like the inside is wet and the outside edges are dry. Okay, so now with that in mind, let's see how we can paint plastic to look like metal. I'm pretty sure you know what spray painting looks like, but I'll show you a little bit of the spray painting. I never know what's interesting to show, so I'm not gonna show all of the spray painting, but I'll show you a little bit of me spray painting. Now I'm, I'm working in a ventilated area, so I know you can tell I'm indoors. Everything's fine. There it is, all nice and shiny silver. 
but we're not going to leave it this way. I want it to look used. I'm going to cover it with a satin clear coat. Um, satin finish is shinier than matte finish, but not as shiny as glossy finish. But it's shinier than this surface already. Uh, metal is generally, in order for it to look like metal, it has to have a smooth kind of shiny surface. But really the satin coat is now dry. You can kind of see it's glossier than it was before. So, first of all, I'm uh, we have we have to think about the order of a few things. There are some areas here that I want to paint as if they are painted metal that is chipping and scratched. And so in those areas, I actually need to paint what's gonna be underneath them before I paint them. So uh, one of the things that I expect under there is rust. And the way that we're gonna do rust is I'm gonna take some burnt umber, a little bit of bright orange. This is pumpkin orange, napthol red light. If you don't know about paint brushes, here's a few things. The bristles matter. Um, of course, there's different shapes. Uh, obviously, a little skinny pointy one is gonna do little skinny pointy things and a big wide one will do wide things. But in addition to that, there is the stuff that the bristles are made out of. And if you uh, take a look, so this one, for example, is called a scrubber. You can hear it. It's very rough. If we take this one, which is uh, used for watercolors, it's long and soft. You can't, you can just barely hear it at all. And so I have all these different ones with different amounts of hardness or roughness uh, or softness for different things. Now chip brushes like this tend to have pretty stiff brushes or pretty stiff bristles. In addition to that, these are not quality brushes. These are cheap. And so the, um, the bristles spread out quite a bit, which normally is annoying in painting, but we actually want to take advantage of that feature. What we're going to do is I'm just going to use a corner of this brush. I'm going to kind of stamp it down into my brown and then I'm pushing it, kind of getting most of it off of the brush. And now when I come over here, I'm going to just press it down. into the area that I want to see rust. So that already looks like it's got quite a bit of rust on it, but Rust is not just one color. So I'm going to now use the orange. I'm going to do the same thing, but with less. So, and then I'm going to put it down and kind of press it in. So this works best, and maybe I should have done it a little bit at a time, when you've still got wet brown, you can kind of blend them in like this but you can mix them on your palette as well. It's okay to leave some of it very bright orange, just little dots of it. Okay, and now we just continue doing the same thing, this time with the red. We're going to add just a little bit of red, push it mostly off of my brush. All right, so 
So if we were going for rusty metal alone, that would be really nice. That's pretty cool. Very rusty. But we're not. We're going to paint over this rust. Okay, before I paint my blue paint, I need to mask off areas where I want to see the rust underneath. Basically, I'm going to determine where it gets chipped or scratched. Uh, we may not see most of this. We'll see as I go. So what I'm going to use is this stuff called art masking fluid. Uh, this stuff is kind of expensive, but uh, if you're like me, you may have a collection of liquid latex in your Halloween gear. Uh, that's all this stuff is, is just latex. So I'm going to use a garbage brush right here. And what I'm going to do is paint this latex wherever I want. I'm going to paint the mask wherever I want to see the rust. So if I go in, it, this is fairly creamy. What I'll do is I'm just going to kind of blotch it. So paint most likely is going to chip where it gets rubbed against, so it's going to be mostly along the edges. This is where the straps go, so there's going to be a lot of rubbing. And now acrylic paint dry or dries extremely quickly, but to speed it up even faster and also this latex, I'm using a blow dryer, just a regular home, just a regular home blow dryer. Okay, the masking has dried for the most part. You can see where it's thick, it's still kind of white, and that's okay. Uh, the top of it, the outer covering is dry, and that's really all we need to do because we're gonna paint over top of it now. So now it's time to add the blue paint. The next color I'm using is yellow. Uh, now, to, if you want to get a nice, vibrant, bright yellow, you really have to paint white under underneath it first. So you do a layer of white, and then you do the yellow on top, and it'll be nice and beautiful. But I want this to look like, um, kind of like the industrial warning paint that you see everywhere in factories. So uh, I'm gonna let it be a little bit drab. Okay, this yellow is still very blotchy, but I think I'm fine with that because the next step, we're going to make it all look dirty um, and greasy. And we're going to do that by using black and brown. You know what? Let's do a wash. So we're going to take the black, mix a little brown with it, and make it very wet. The washes are great for getting into the little cracks. So if we think about it, what we're thinking is where does the dirt and the grease hide? If we were to wipe this thing down, where would be the places where we wouldn't be able to clean it as well? That's good.
and then periodically wipe it off. Now I'm, I've got to be gentle as I do this because I've still got that masking there and you can see here where I started to rub too hard and it started to take off the masking. You can see the rust underneath. So I painted the black, I painted black stripes over the yellow to make it like a caution tape. Uh, I also painted black on some greeblies. And then I did a brown wash over that black so that it also would feel a little dingy and not super shiny, bright, fresh black. I'll start here. Oh my gosh, it's like the like masking stuff you get on yeah, it is. It's the exact same stuff. <laughs> Finding any scraps? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of post apocalyptic, huh? Yeah. With the painting done, we've reached the final stages uh, to make this wearable. So the plastic, although it's smooth and this thing is fairly light, um, I can imagine that after wearing it a while, this part right here actually leans on my nose and it might start to get uncomfortable. So I want to add a little bit of padding. Also, these holes are so big that if I were to cough or sneeze with this mask on, it's not going to protect very many people. Uh, and so what I want to do is put a lining inside um, that's made out of cloth um, that will actually be the true mask and uh, I'm going to use velcro so that if I need to take it out to replace it or to wash it I can do that so first let's cut out the leather for this piece all right I've got a little bit of scrap leather here this is very soft I'm going to glue this leather in with uh, with super glue. I'm going to For the lining, I'm just going to use this piece of polyester. It's like silky. Just cuz I like the way it looks and it will be nice the black will look good against the back of this. I don't know. Okay, and I've got some velcro here that I can use to velcro this in. Alright, there it is. And now for the strap. I'm going to make the strap out of the same leather that I made the nose piece out of. It's this soft leather. So I think I'm going to glue the leather down, but I'm also going to sew straps here on the connectors.
I've got about an inch of space here on the leather that I want to glue down to the mask just to kind of even out the strain. So I'm going to use super glue again. Before I do the other side, uh, I want to go ahead and sew the straps together. So what I need to do is cut a couple of straps that will fit inside those holes. Okay, now what I'm going to do is thread these through their respective holes. And we're going to fold it in half and we're going to sew them together like that. So I've got it folded over on this side. So I'm going to show you how we're going to sew this. Um, I have these tools. These are leather punches for sewing. Just making sure I get through all three layers. Okay, I'm using this wax wax string that's used for leather working. And what I do is go through the holes. First I come through one side with the needle and then the other side of the string we go back down through the same hole. This face mask really turned out awesome. I really like it, it looks so cool, and it's very comfortable to wear. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I really appreciate that. Uh, also subscribe if you wanna see other videos like this in the future. Uh, leave a comment if you have any other ideas for other projects you'd like me to tackle. Until the next video, don't be bored, be creative. I'll catch you next time.